the latest monster appears, a mysterious underground world. It will unveil the mysterious veil. This episode will reveal, David, who is already a hundred years old. Why is he still so young? In the previous episode, David blew up the mysterious crater in the Alaskan Valley. He has been following the monster's trail. And at this moment, David arrives in Kazakhstan. His lifelong admiration, Tracy, was buried here. Now he revisits this place. It stirs up many sad memories for him. After the tragic incident happened back then, the Emperor's organization rebuilt this building, and the organization forbids anyone from entering. Dewar doesn't know their purpose for doing this, but David knows it clearly. The organization wants to prevent the monsters inside from escaping. The scene shifts. It takes us to the Emperor's organization base in 1955. David and the other two are reporting on the progress of their investigation. The naval commander in charge of taking over the organization. He does not acknowledge the research accomplishments of the three. He also points out that the Emperor has been misusing national resources. They have wasted countless time and money on pseudoscience. He is completely unaware of the seriousness of the problem. He firmly believes in the power of nuclear weapons. Godzilla won't cause any significant damage. And David promised Tracy to keep the fact that Godzilla is immune to nuclear weapons a secret for now. David can only keep his words to himself. But the person in charge is pushing the limits. He also accuses them of hiring Dr. Suzuki. The other party is a former Japanese naval officer. He should not have access to the highest US secrets. Andrew can't tolerate it anymore. He rolls up his sleeves and is about to teach the person in charge a lesson. However, the consequences of Andrew's actions are, the three founders of the organization are demoted to the basement, and that person in charge will definitely report to their superiors. David knows that if he wants to regain power, he must help the general find the monsters. But if he knows that even the most powerful hydrogen bomb can't kill Godzilla, they will create even more powerful weapons. Tracy will never agree to tell the general about this. David is completely caught in a dilemma. At this moment, he looks at the map on the wall. David tells Tracy, since the general wants to know where the monsters are hiding, then let's draw a map for him. The map will indicate all the possible locations where the monsters may appear. After the Lawton incident, all the research notes compiled into a complete report. Submit them all. They'd better do it before the fiscal budget meeting ends to convince the general. They only have three days to prepare the current situation spanning decades. Tracy and Andrew's descendant Lisa meet with Taro. The two of them follow Tim into the Emperor's organization. The place is filled with various boxes of documents. It was all built by Tracy and the other two. However, there are no photos of them on the wall. There are black and white photos of the general hanging on the wall. Andrew fell deeper into obsession after Tracy's death. He started dedicating himself to proving the theory of teleportation and wormholes. These hardcore conspiracy theories are not recognized at all. After Tim finishes speaking, he opens the room at the end of the corridor. The Emperor's organization has outposts all over the world. Recently, one of the outposts detected a set of gamma rays. The data is similar to when the San Francisco incident occurred. Following that, Alaska, every place Bernie has been involved in, similar gamma rays are appearing. These locations are also marked on his studio's map. Is Bernie predicting the monster's roots? Or is he tracking the monsters? But before that, Lisa and the others need to figure out David's motives. Weir says, David and Dewar were just in Alaska. They caused a big explosion. Afterward, the gamma radiation levels in that area dropped to zero. But the data in other areas instantly increased. It even approached the levels observed on the day of the San Francisco incident. This is not a good sign. What if David creates another explosion? The gamma radiation levels could exceed the limit. Weir asks Lisa and her siblings to find out David's next destination. But the map they have was taken by David in the desert. So they have no leads. Tim leads the three young people. They head to the office where Tracy and Andrew used to work. They search through the documents, hoping to find clues about the map. Just then, Lisa discovers an application file. The file reads, Organization member died in the line of duty. David applies for her death benefits to be left to the surviving spouse Andrew. Further down is the name of the grandmother, Tracy. Upon hearing this, Tim suddenly realizes something. He walks towards the map on the wall. Tim remembers that Tracy died in Kazakhstan, and that happens to be one of the areas with a surge in gamma radiation levels. Lisa has a strong intuition. David must have gone to Kazakhstan. He delusionally wants to rewrite past mistakes, so David is definitely going back to the same place. David returns to the place that changed his life. 
but we doesn't have the authority to cross the border. She can only send an elite team over. Upon hearing this, Lisa immediately volunteers. After discussing among themselves, they decide that Tim will lead the team. Everyone heads to Kazakhstan. After Andrew and Tracy receive David's assignment, they start tirelessly organizing their research notes. In fact, compared to David, who has a military background, Tracy and Andrew's souls and ideals are more aligned. They become increasingly dependent on each other. Love silently sprouts and grows. David saw it all. He can't ignore the sadness in his heart, but he can't abandon his principles for Tracy. Time goes back to the present. Tim and his team arrive in Kazakhstan. The organization provides them with bulletproof vests. Lisa says that this won't work at all. They can't just charge in and fight David. It will only make the situation uncontrollable. What we need to do is communicate and find a solution. Besides, David won't harm Lisa and Kentaru, because he considers them as his only family left. While they are talking, they arrive outside the old building. David's convoy is parked outside. They crawl into the building through a hole in the wall. They follow the traces left by David. They continue deeper into the radiation inside the building. The radiation levels fluctuate around 0 2 millisieverts. This is roughly equivalent to the level of an X-ray. And this is highly unreasonable. After the core meltdown in this area, here's the next 1000 years. It is not suitable for human habitation. But the radiation inside the building, it remains at harmless levels. In this case, there is only one possibility. There must be a monster absorbing that radiation. Tim is following the lead person. He accidentally steps on an animal carcass. It looks like a large leg, not far from them. There is also a large pile of empty shells in the corridor. These are remnants of insect molting. Insect molting is for increasing body size. They can't imagine how big these things are now. Finally, a few people arrive near the reactor. The radiation has risen to 6 millisieverts. Behind the hole is where Tracy died. A massive crater. It appears before everyone. The hole is deep and bottomless. It emits a faint glow. The entrance is covered in vines and moss. They quickly realize. There are bombs placed around the entrance. Could David want to seal off this entrance? Mary is planning to try to disarm them. Unexpectedly, Dewar suddenly appears. He orders Tim's people to drop their guns. The latter obediently complies. Lisa ignores Dewar's threat. She asks where David is. Just as Dewar finishes speaking, David emerges from the shadows. He agrees to negotiate first. Let's go back to 1955. Andrew's drawing of the map is stuck at a crucial point. He marked the locations where the monsters appeared. However, Andrew couldn't figure out the connection. Just then, a small ant crawls into the hole in the map. Andrew suddenly finds an answer to his confusion. He braves the heavy rain to talk to Tracy. The appearance of the ant. Let Andrew understand one thing. The monsters are likely lurking underground. And their nests are like termite tunnels crisscrossing underground. That's why the monsters can appear unnoticed. They suddenly appear in different parts of the earth. There's even a possibility that underground connects to another world. It coexists with our surface world. Just as Andrew gets excited, a child's voice comes from the room. Tracy walks over and carries a young boy. Andrew is a bit confused by the situation. Tracy explains the cause and effect to Andrew. It turns out she is a single mother. Tracy didn't intentionally hide it from Andrew and David. It's just that as a Japanese woman, she already had a hard time earning respect here. She didn't confess at first. And later, she didn't find a suitable opportunity to speak up. Trace's reason for going to UC Berkeley. She hopes that after the war ends, this can give Bernie more opportunities. However, she has been unable to save enough money to bring her son over. This is thanks to the work of the Emperor organization. Bernie's visa was approved about six months ago. The scene shifts back to the present. Lisa asks David why he wants to talk to her alone. David's intention is clear. Godzilla's every action has a purpose. There is another world below. David is so sure, because he has entered it before. Tracy and Andrew have also been there, but the Emperor organization refused to believe. Godzilla is not here to harm us. It just wants its kind to stay in the underground world, and let humans stay obediently on the surface. So David plans to seal off the underground entrance severing the connection between the two worlds. Lisa objects upon hearing this, because after David destroys the passage, the gamma radiation readings in other areas increase. If they continue to seal off the entrance, what will happen if the tragedy in San Francisco repeats itself? Back then, David went to see the general with the final report. At that time, the general was about to halt the entire emperor plan. David wanted to turn the tide with that map, but the general didn't give him any chance. 
David had to play his trump card. He informed the general that Godzilla was still alive. Upon hearing this, indeed, his face changed dramatically. After all, the day Godzilla was bombed with a nuclear bomb, the general was present. David solemnly handed over the report, and it shows that this is the effort of Tracy and Andrew. If it weren't for the selfless dedication of these two individuals, they definitely wouldn't have been able to find Godzilla. David saved his two partners and the Emperor plan, but this action of his would also cause other problems. Now, the time is at present. David tells Lisa, the idea of sealing off the entrance was originally proposed by Tracy. Now, David only wants to help Tracy and Andrew achieve the goals they have worked so hard for. After he finishes speaking, he orders the bomb to be activated. Suddenly, the entire building starts shaking. Everyone runs out in a panic. Mary tries to save Lisa but accidentally falls into the abyss. Immediately after that, a huge beetle-like monster emerges from the ground. It opens its mouth and roars at Lisa. At this critical moment, falling debris hits the monster. Lisa also slides towards the hole with the monster. Seeing this, David quickly grabs her wrist, but in the next second, the entire platform falls. They both fall into the entrance. Then the countdown ends, and the bomb is activated. Will the underground world soon be revealed? The mysterious underground world. It has a time-stopping effect. So, what about Tracy in the underground world? Is she still alive? All these puzzles make me even more excited. If you like my channel, please subscribe to my channel.